On today's show, we react to the bonanza that we were blessed with last night, as well as breaking down the rest of the matchups. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo! The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We finally did it. We got a Thursday night game that delivered the we, goods. We did. 76 total points. Good work, everybody. 41 to 35 on yeah. Thursday night football. You know what could have made that game even better? Maybe some rain. So some some you know something to really take that game down a notch. Oh, Not was it like, too much for you? It was just well, it was like in a dome. And it was like, oh man, this is just perfect fun football. Yeah. Who wants, that's not America's football. Yeah, that's not that's not grown man. That's not man football. Let's get let's let's take get this it out. down enough. Get it out of get out of your system as we get into the games today. Well, he's just talking about how fun the game hey, was. I I've got a I got a spoiler for you though. If you throw Desmond Ritter and uh Tim Boyle into a dome, not sure you're gonna get what you want. Yeah, but throw him into the rain <laughs> and see what you get. Yeah, okay, all right. So uh bad or worse. Look, this was um this was a heck of a game. I mean, it was it was wild from the jump. Like you're in this game. I know Mike Mike is giving the uh huh the, face. Gino? Well, look, this what? was this was he heard us talk about the numbers on the show and he said, "Um, let's face the Dallas defense and let's eviscerate it." DK Metcalf had 6 catches for 134 and 3. <laughs> I'm I was playing him last night. In multiple leagues, uh, and against by playing him, him I, it was against him. Yeah. He scored four points last week, and this is fantasy football. I mean, I don't think we are very um, bullish on any of the wideouts going into this game, and yeah. nothing on paper on said the, on the Seahawks side. On the Seahawks yeah. side, because we, you know, it was a nine-point, uh, you know, line for Dallas. They were favored by nine at home, where they had beaten everybody and nobody scored on them at home they i think uh, they had outscored people like 200 to 40 and the uh, seahawks were coming off a brutal beat down at the hands of the 49ers but, but, but not just a beat down but over the last month geno smith had thrown a total of three touchdowns which he, he did in this game how many touchdowns did dk metcalf have on the year before last night i'm looking at geno right now i'll pull up DK. yeah uh, let, let me lot. know because uh look, look put it this way my aus like my megalobol team uh, my, Three. Okay. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a double. Uh, my, it just feels wrong uh, if you're against it, and amazing if you have it. My Megalobol team has scored a ton of points this year. I'm in second place because, in part, my awesome Dallas defense, which last night put up negative four points. Oh man. I mean, there were there were. Four I didn't even think about the yeah. Dallas team. Yeah. Oh, sorry, people. Now there 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 was somebody that sent me a, a DM this morning. And that they're like, oh well, I lost, and they had faced the CD and and DK, uh, Dak, and then they had the Cowboys defense. Oh mercy! Yeah. And it was like you 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 are done at that point. Yeah, like yeah. that's get a jump on week fourteen. Yeah, just uh, go away for the weekend, do something else. In our, in my matchup, I'm playing uh, the betrayer. Yes, uh, Papa Josh. I'm playing the other side of the betrayer. Oh, owl, yeah, owl. Yeah, and so. Look, the fantasy points were flowing. I had Dak and CD. He had DK Metcalf. And at the end of the night, it kind of ended up being like a wash by way of projection because Metcalf with 30 plus fantasy points. CD Lamb had 17 targets in this game. <laughs> he had 12 catches. He he did drop a fourth down. He dropped the touchdown. touchdown. Yeah. Uh, Dak is on fire. Give. Those numbers that we had this morning, because oh, we got to find them somewhere. Um, I believe it was in. Uh, let me see. Yeah, if I I've can got pull it. So up. he's got a nine percent touchdown rate. His touchdown. This is over the last. Yeah, uh, the whole year. Uh, yes, I believe so. His On seven the year. I thought it was just since the bye week. Well, his seventeen game pace using the numbers, I believe, since week eight, okay. is 
5,386 passing yards with 56.7 touchdowns. The most passing touchdown since week eight. Dak has 20. Next highest has 10. He's been, to me, a super villain uh, because I don't have him. To 11 twelfths of all people out there, mm -hmm. I think Dak has become a real, real problem in fantasy leagues. Like I don't see it stopping. I don't see it slowing. The schedule coming up is what Mike highlighted earlier in the year of like, they, they're going to face some hard run defenses and some soft secondaries coming up, and it is – It's working it, it, out. It's like I don't know how the Dak team doesn't win their their fantasy league right now. Yeah, you you, you have a strange amount of like dis, oh, disdain I, for the fact that I have these guys on my roster. It's not just that you have them. It's that I have Dak in zero of my leagues, and so that means I feel like right now I win zero championships. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know if the shoe's going to drop at some point, but I, I'm going to go as far as to say, I think Dak is the MVP of, of the National Football League. He's... I think he deserves to be the MVP. Like, in a league, like, in a season where there isn't really... Like, I think there's non-quarterbacks that are very deserving of the award this year. They never win it, so I'm not counting them. Yeah. Because they, they don't have the chance to win it. And now Miles Garrett's hurt. He was one of the guys in contention. Tyreek uh, Hill. Tyreek Hill, Christian McCaffrey, both should be in contention. But I, I can't. I, I look at Dak and I say this is probably the MVP. They beat a, um, a team with a winning record. Finally, mm -hmm. you know the, and they demolish, uh, they demolish teams right now. It's really going to come down to the next two weeks. They play San Francisco 49ers, uh, or I'm sorry, they, uh, they play the Eagles. the Eagles in two weeks, um, and they've got a stretch run of really good matchups for passing, like the Eagles. But that's not an easy game to win, or Buffalo, great to pass on them not an easy one to win Miami again Detroit again so if they win those games I think you're right Dak will be the MVP if they if they don't win those games then it'll go to Jalen Hurts the Zach Charbonnet experience was good last night especially when he he caught a 39 yard pass he had 60 on the ground had a touchdown had a handful of chances for more than one touchdown but that was nice to see if you started and Pollard back into the end zone yet again. Obviously, Charbonnet injured in the fourth quarter with a knee injury. We're waiting to see how severe it is. That would be pretty brutal if you finally get Charbonnet's, you know. We did get news this morning that it was a bruise. Oh, great. So not, not I, considered I to be that. serious. Um, let, let me put it this way. Was there a startable player that you were disappointed in from last night? Tyler Lockett. Lockett. Tyler Lockett was 5 for 47 on eight targets, dropped uh pretty big play and was disappointing yeah he, he's sunsetting guys it, it is it, happening it does seem like it yeah and jsn seven for 62 also had a touchdown that just didn't uh i felt like it was a touchdown oh no yeah oh, that no. i missed the replay yeah. and, and and it was devastating for me because it turned into a dk touchdown because he dropped it but what a game i mean 76 points on thursday night football ferguson was back oh yeah Brandon Cooks had yeah. a great game. For Pollard delicious. had a great game. It was just excellent. Yeah. It's also Friday. Put Clan Friday. All right. We give away $100 every Friday to a supporter of the show. You can support at jointhefoot.com. Get access to an extra episode. Lots of perks, in-season tools and resources, and um, all the premium Discord channels. Today's $100 winner is a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com. It goes to, this is the username, Runaway Train. Oh, never going back. <laughs> Runaway Train, $100. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, which, it is a, it is a uh, I should bring it up, I should say. Of Congratulations, $100 to Fantasy Champs. Championship time is coming up. Fantasy Champs is, if you're looking for trophies or just anything to celebrate. According to Jason, I should pre-buy. You probably should. I think you should. Yeah. It's like the tattoo. Just call you shot. Worst case scenario, you just hand it over to me. Huh. Well, that that would be... Um... And you say, I got this for you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have C CD? I In don't. Deck? No, oh, I don't. You... Andy does. Oh. <laughs> it's just setting me up for – it's just not – There's no way you lose the championship. There's no way oh, I win the man. championship. I'll put it that way. This guy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk news. 
News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we heard from everybody on Twitter on this one, uh, thinking we may have orchestrated the event. But the Cardinals have granted Zachary Ertz his release. Yes! Yes! Oh, baby, as a... As Cardinals fans, as Trey McBride uh, dun, believers, dun, 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 uh. yes, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> there was, I I will admit, there was that tiny little bit of of fear of with Zachers come eventually coming back. It's like, do the Cardinals do the right thing? In my opinion, for the team, which is get your young players involved, or do they put the old guy who's not part of the future back on the field and then try and feature him? They do not. It is Trey McBride uh, dynasty Season. for for life at this point. It's and year I'm two. Very excited. He's yeah. he's playing great. That fear would have been a hundred percent justified because it would have happened. I mean, Zach Ertz in games played this year was on a hundred plus target pace. They would have jackknifed him into the lineup and ruined your Trey McBride. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it's not going to happen. Zach Ertz wants to go play with a contender and somehow doesn't see the two and ten Cardinals as that. That's pretty ridiculous, but. Um, that for, for Twitter, yeah, there's questions of, should you go pick up Zach Gertz for wherever he goes? I don't think I would be making a mad dash. If you've got a massive tight end problem and you've got disposable pieces on your bench. Sure. Maybe he signs right. in Baltimore. Baltimore is the only destination I think that would be like, you need to pick up Zach Gertz and probably play him. There are other destinations where he could be a streaming guy, but I'm not clamoring for Ertz. This is more about McBride. Yeah. If he, he, I was even thinking if he signed in Baltimore, and I'm presuming this is like the Mark Andrews manager who probably has Isaiah Likely at this point. It's like if you have Likely and Zach Ertz, there's no way you'd have confidence. It would almost just ruin Likely. It could, yeah. And you'd probably be trying to find somebody with more snaps. Keenan Allen did not practice on Thursday. Okay. Uh, quad. He's done this before. Yeah. And they, they, they actually, it would be illegal. They'd have to forfeit because they wouldn't have any re receivers. Right. So he has to play. Yeah, and, and if uh, if he plays, you play him, obviously. Deontay Johnson did not practice on Thursday due to an illness. Demario Dugna Douglas did not practice on Thursday due to a concussion. You he can will almost, not be playing. Yeah, say guarantee he's out. Cardinals, uh, head and shoulders, knees and toes. Uh, knees Hollywood and Brown, groin. the heel. Michael Wilson, the shoulder. Trey McBride, the groin. Trey McBride, All didn't practice. Trey Mc, no, Trey McBride was limited. Oh, that did this, change. And that this changed. is uh, – Beat reporters on Twitter. What happened yesterday? What is going like? We got reports race, yesterday that tank, the race to be first yeah. of getting the information yeah. out there, and and maybe it's the uh, kind of like the compilers. Maybe it's their fault because beat reporters are saying I don't see that player right now in in open media, uh, the, the the media part of the practice. Was and there then, an eclipse during practices <laughs> in which you could not see who was on the field? But they. And then they say, well, I didn't see him, So, uh, uh, but then that news is picked up. Trey McBride did not practice. And then you get the actual report, and it's, no, they were limited. And there was Tank Dell. Was, yeah, he, was, he, was, he, didn't, he practice. didn't practice. Oh, no, he did. Uh, who else? There Trey was, McBride was one of them. There was like four. Brooks, yeah. do you remember any of the others that popped up yesterday? Uh, I don't. Uh, okay. I can, uh, let's see. I'll try and find him. Oh, Travis Etienne. Yep. Didn't practice with his chest. Oh, no, he did. He was He was limited. <laughs> Like let's let's get the accurate information out there, please. It was a bit of it's like a telephone thing because like somebody will say I did yes. I did I don't think I saw him yeah. and then the next person's like he did not practice. So limited Trey McBride, uh, Brees Hall limited with the hamstring on Thursday as well. Uh, Dalvin Cook dealing with a shoulder injury <gasps> should be fine for Sunday. <laughs> you might have to explain. Like I feel like that. Uh, I will, that drop alone I nothing. does not tell anybody uh, anything. Is, if you have not been, if you don't know what the drop is, come on, stick with the show during the off season. Uh, Jason and I really liked Israel Abanacanda, a running back who was then selected pretty late to the Jets, buried on a depth chart. But maybe there's an opportunity for him. I think he's a good player. And Abana kind of don't yeah. want none. Yes. Unless you got runs, hun. <laughs> okay, so that's where the sound effect comes. And we're not talking about. Diarrhea runs. No, 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 no. Like, I'm a running back. Yes. Watch me run. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> Happy Friday. D dare I move on? I'll allow it.
Please move on. Dal- <laughs> D- Dalton Schultz uh, didn't practice again to a ham- due to a hamstring injury. Probably not going to play. Amari Cooper, he will play. And it really, this is not, uh, I don't see it in the news, but like it needs to be. Uh, we might have Joe Flacco this week. Like I think we will have Joe Flacco as the starter for Cleveland. So there is the chance that like Amari Cooper has and, 20 targets. Yeah. I mean, Joe Flacco throws the ball a ton. They play the Rams. I don't, I don't know if you know, but like the Rams with a victory equal the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. And I believe have the tiebreaker. So they, they would actually take over. So they're, they're in it. And, um, and so Joe Flacco DTR is not practicing. DTR is above him on the depth chart, but it could be Flacco. And then if Flacco plays, Competently, I would imagine it's Flacco here on out. Probably. Uh, but that is a big if for a 38-year-old that, uh, you know, turnover prone mixed with, like, a really good defense is not necessarily the right situation. The, the reports are glowing on his arm strength still being there. And Cleveland, tell me this, Cleveland's defense is dealing with major injuries right now. Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett, um, another defensive lineman, I believe. Like, are they getting the downgrade in your mind? Like, would you go play... Like, would you play Cleveland defense this week against the Rams, or would you go play like, you know? I would rather play Atlanta versus that, well, the that's, Jets. That's that's one I was going to bring up. Yeah. Or what about? Uh, is it? Uh, who, would you play the Rams defense against Flacco in the same game that's, over Cleveland's defense? That's really really because they're at home. Yeah, I would. I think I lean towards the home matchup. But again, we we had the question on the footcast yesterday of like, do you drop Cleveland? No. You hold on, wait for them to get healthy. Their playoff schedule, week 15 and week 17, is as good as it gets. And when Miles Garrett is healthy and Denzel Ward is back, obviously this is like the best defense in the league. I appreciate it, Jay, because I just need your advice on the best way to win my title. Yeah, well. That's just, what you're um, here for. Uh, my best piece of advice, keep starting Dak and CD together. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll work on that. T. Higgins hopes to play in week 13, Mike. is he? Uh, are you hoping to have him in your lineup? Yeah, man. Can't wait. T. Higgins fresh off his injury with, with uh backup quarterback. It's gonna be great. How many what what uh what percent of snaps do you think he makes it through? Ooh, let's go. I'll give him his, his average. So sixty like sixty five. Okay. Chris Godwin not spotted at Bucks practice on Friday morning. This is new Doesn't this mean is... he's not practicing. He's <laughs> right. just not currently seen. Oh my gosh! If he I, could be wearing an invisibility. Cloak. If we find out that Chris Godwin practiced his full today, I'm gonna lose my mind. Because what are we reporting anymore? We're gonna have to go to the practices. We're gonna have to send people out there. I could report right now that I did not see Chris Godwin at practice, and that is not a lie. I didn't I, watch. I didn't, any, I didn't see Mike Evans at practice. He was limited yesterday. I didn't so. see anyone at practice. Chris Godwin was limited yesterday. Stay so. away from the non-spotted <laughs> rewards, maybe. Uh, I will say this: Don't start Chris Godwin. Yeah, that that's probably better better advice to give. Is he's not producing when he's healthy? Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Fantasy forecast. We're gonna we're gonna have to put Papa Josh on a plane every week, and he's gonna have to bounce from practice to practice. And just let us know who's spotted. Get that boy some binoculars. I want I want yeah. eyes on these players. Couldn't we have like uh couldn't every player in the NFL like throw an air tag in their pocket and then we could just <laughs> we could just track the practice You have lost Chris Godwin remotely. <laughs> <laughs> like you could see the field on, during practice time mm-hmm. and find out if the air tag is around the field. Well, they basically used to do that during the COVID times. Some teams would have those right? like yeah, yeah. monitors. Proximity? Yeah, the like. Oh, the, wait, to keep them six feet apart? Uh-huh. They probably have all the tech already. Yeah, let's let's Just give it. us the app. I want to pull the practice up and find out if Godwin is moving at a rate of speed uh, indicative of a starting wide receiver. <laughs> all right, into the fantasy forecast we go. Mike, you're not in on that plan? Oh, no, I'm super in. Oh, okay. All right, you'll sign up? Yeah. I'm going to charge a subscription fee for that. I'll, I'll pay it. Uh, the Colts, Titans, Chargers, Patriots, Lions, Saints, Falcons, Jets, Cardinals, Steelers, Dolphins, and the Manders. Those matchups were yesterday. We covered them. Today we're gonna we're gonna start off with the six and five, unbelievably six and five Denver Broncos against the six and five Houston Texans. What a game! I mean, yeah. I mean, coming into this year, 
you know, even like one week into the season, you'd be like, oh, man, Denver versus Texans. Yeah. That's going to be awful. Woof. This is going to be a great game. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Houston minus three. Uh, I'm a little surprised at that line. Over under is 47 and a half. I would have probably put this at maybe like Houston minus one mm. or or a pick em if I were like – You were handicapping. Handicapping it. So, uh, you know, this I do like Denver in the game. I would not have expected this game to matter. It matters a lot. C.J. Stroud, you know, he's he's playable every single week. Tank Dell, they're expecting him to be back. It, it does matter to me quite a bit if if you have a healthy Tank Dell and a healthy Noah Brown available. Yeah, what do you do with uh, – are you worried about Tank Dell at all re-aggravating this or missing – like, would you – consider benching him I don't for a have, decent other option well, or look, in my situation it would be like Amari Cooper with Joe Flacco and I'm not going to do that so that that's too far that's too far so for I think for most people there ain't room to worry on Tank Dell it's like if he's active you play him he's been so good would you start Nico Collins over him in the same game why why is that why am I getting that look you're not getting that look uh, it's just Al. Al was sabotaging things. Al is uh, Al is just he's just wondering if Deontay Hardy would be a good pivot <laughs> option, and he's asking that because uh, he's the only soul on this planet that played Deontay Hardy last week in a in a game. Yeah, because yeah. the Bills did. Yeah. Um. <laughs> goodness gracious. Sorry. You, what was your Nico question? Nico, With Nico or Tank? If oh, I play I would play Nico if I had both. Yeah. I just the injury concerns. You're not are you worried about Patrick. Sertan. Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. Okay, but I C.J. Stroud is is uh, a special guy. I guess that that's the question is, is a Stroud about ten? <laughs> what? Mm. What? Can I get that button? Yeah. Boston. Uh, have Nico it's Friday? I don't care. Have, <laughs> what do I care? It wasn't good. I know. <laughs> yeah. Have Nico and Tank entered the start no matter what? Yeah. Like I this think into so. the they're hurt. No, start your studs. Yeah, I mean, C.J. Stroud leads the NFL in 20-plus yard yeah. passing plays. He's on pace for, uh, what is it, 35, 36 touchdowns on the year. It's it's time to change the way you view that team, and hopefully you already have. Cause... Tank Dell has been a top 24 wide receiver each of the last four weeks. Uh, a wide receiver won three of those four weeks. V wide receiver won one of those weeks. Like... And Dalton Schultz is probably not playing in this game either, so you're taking a target away, which yeah. seems like when you remove a target or two, the other guys are just – Inferno. Interesting. So, I mean, Broncos what? are a great defense against wide receivers, so wonder, it's something to watch. You know, we like the college tape of Brevin Jordan. I uh -huh. wonder if he's like a sneaky DFS play. If uh, Could you, be. You know, if, Is this if, year three or four for De Brevin Jordan? Uh, this It's year seven. It's three. <laughs> year three for yeah. Brevin Jordan. I think in year three, Jay, college tape's probably not. No, no, no. I, I know. I'm just. I'm saying if they are utilizing the tight end. In what do you think of the NFL tape? On <laughs> after if, three years, he's actually had big. No, I know. He's flashy a, plays. He in would the be NFL. a touchdown gamble in DFS. If you'd like to play him today, that'd be great. Hmm. Okay. If you want to roll him in, if you want to rework your lineup for the, uh, you seen his Pop Warner stuff though. <laughs> uh, Russell Wilson is my start of the week. Munch mentioned it yesterday. I I love it. I love the matchup against the Texans defense. They bleed points to wide receiver uh, quarterback mike give me the uh give me your thoughts on javante williams he is oh, man. heavily involved played 70 percent of snaps last week 24 opportunities led to the rb 29 though yeah and it's so bizarre uh, but what is happening here with javante's usage because 70 percent of the snaps that was that's the highest he has seen on the year 24 uh opportunities looks like the third most that he's had but that was a, like a week removed from 49 percent of the snaps and 13 opportunities I mean I I think you play him as a as a low-end running back too but it's it's still high risk like there's a there is a chance that Sean Payton decides no we're gonna get back into well, your, what do you, you think play the, half the what do you snaps. think of the game because I think that's gonna tell you the story for Javante's usage last last week they they just kind of uh suffocated Cleveland there was not a chance right. for Cle like they won big and because of that i think javante saw the majority of the like kill the clock carries and that's why the the fantasy finish wasn't huge despite the the workload i mean i i see the game going under the but do you see denver winning it or houston uh, i would 
I'll take Houston. Here's here's a uh, maybe a bigger running back decision to be made. Devin Singletary had 82% of snaps last week. So you, you can kind of, with that amount of work, yeah. just pretend that Damian Pierce doesn't exist. I mean, that's the same level of work as he had the previous two weeks. It is. but the, He also had more targets, I believe, or more routes run for any running back. The Over the last six weeks, the Broncos are 12th against fantasy running backs. If you adjust for schedule, like it betraying their uh, 31st on the season. So this is a team that you have to look how the trend is going. I think Devin Singletary is a, a fine volume play, but James Conner or Devin Singletary? With with what happened last week of the Houdini act that James Conner pulled on us, I'm, I would go Singletary. All right, we will turn the page. Jason is smiling. He's <laughs> very happy with himself. Is he looking at Pop Warner, Brevin Jordan stuff or I, what? I am. I'm forcing Brevin Jordan into my lineup for Are today's you right roster. Now? Yes, okay. Just for fun. I like that you're just – because this is one you can – you can definitely disclose to us without concern. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I have pushed him into my lineup. Okay, all right. This is this is great. Um, can't wait to get there. This will be the reason I'm shamed next week. All right, let's take a quick break. Come back with this next matchup. Carolina's one and ten. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers four and seven. The games in Tampa and the DraftKings Sportsbook line Tampa minus five. The over under is just thirty seven points. A couple of bottom dwellers in the NFC. It's a and they're inversed. Carolina is a run funnel. The Buccaneers are a pass funnel. Who but wins? The, but the Panthers can't throw the ball, <laughs> so I'm going to say the Buccaneers win. And I'm going to say the real winner here is Rashad White. Yeah, Rashad White has been great. 18.4 opportunities per game. There is hardly any other matchup better than targeting Carolina for running backs. Um I I think it's, you know, obviously you're going to be starting him because he's been great for a long time, but this appears to be a a blow up opportunity. Rashad White's the wide, uh the running back 9. Oof. On the season and okay. he and he just doesn't like he hits double digits. Yeah, the, the beginning of the year, the first six weeks, um, it was back and forth. Every other week, good. Every other week, putrid. Um, the last six weeks, he has not been outside the, the top 18 running backs on a single week. He's been fantastic. All right, so uh, Rashad White, you start him. Mike Evans, you start him. And then are we done with Tampa? Yeah. Are you okay with Baker in this game? I mean, yeah, I, it, the Panthers I'm, are kind of the Houston situation. Like, mm -hmm. I'm where yeah, and, and I get quarterbacks it, but, are awful against them. I'm I'm still okay streaming baker in a very desperate situation with all the crazy bye weeks going on now mike you've you've gone on out on a a really dangerous limb i mean in a storm like you're on a fragile limb okay you weigh a little too much for it how hey it's in the middle of a storm but you've said adam thielen is your start of the week yes to ignore last week and to start him against this buffalo defense yep and uh, yep i still feel the same and uh, d does anybody else in Carolina deserve a spot in your fantasy lineups? Absolutely not. Um, don't no. Don't do it. I mean you, the don't do it. Yeah, you know, no, I agree. I'm I'm not telling people <laughs> keep, to do keep it. Going. I'm saying to pay attention to Ooh, how attention. things are. Pay attention to how things change. Jonathan Mingo last week was four for sixty and one <laughs> incredible out of bounds catch. Uh, I think he popped up on the injury report as well, but that's. Mingo's usage change would Mingo be the thing. Mingo baby. That's the thing that I would be watching the most for Carolina. Whether he eats your baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. That's, that is my biggest fear. I will not be watching Carolina. Uh, that's fine. How many, uh, yeah, how many morning games do we got? Is that a morning game? Uh, uh, nope. Afternoon. I was just hoping maybe we, we could avoid that on one of the screens. Uh, Cleveland, seven and four. Los Angeles, the Rams, uh, five and six. We talked about it earlier. It it, it could very well it, it it will be Joe Flacco. I think. I mean, uh, coming back from a concussion right now, we have did not practice on Thursday. Jason, do you have any reason to believe Dorian Thompson Robinson will be back out there? No, you're usually going to miss a game this year, anyways. That's just been regular across the league. When you've got a guy that's not practicing on Thursday, um, at the quarterback position, where you know you're at this point, you you have someone practicing with the ones installing the game plan doing those things yeah, I, you're I, seven and four yeah i i think it's just joseph flacco 
this week. <laughs> Joseph Flacco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's older now. Have we confirmed? Uh, can we get a middle name? Oh, I'm sure Kyle's on that. Yeah. Joseph? Uh, d- it's actually Joseph. It's Joe Joseph. <laughs> oh, and then Joe <laughs> Joseph. Kyle, Vincent. Oh, it's Vincent. Ah. Joseph Vincent Flacco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Amari Cooper, could he surprise? I mean, he says he's going to be out there. He's going to be playing. I, I think he could surprise. I mean, Amari Cooper has been good when he has had anyone that could get him the ball down the field. Joe Flacco should be able to do that. Um, I know Joe Flacco is going to get the ball out quickly. That is one downside for Amari Cooper. Usually you need to let the you know the routes develop to throw the ball down the field. So I, you know, I'm not going away from uh, David Njoku in this matchup if it's Flacco just because we've seen DTR target him a lot. Everyone's targeted Njoku a lot. He seems like a core part here. Uh, but I do think you could play Amari Cooper. He, he does not seem to me like a, like a you know, a hands-off approach. Kyron Williams was dominant last week. It'll be a different test against the Cleveland defense. It has softened against the run over the last six weeks, but it is a challenge uh, for Kyron. Probably not affecting any way you treat him, right? You're yeah, you're, you're gonna you're gonna play him. You're gonna play him, um, Kyle. I don't know if you saw this stat, but I believe, uh, if my memory is correct, they had said Kyron has not had a single carry against a stacked box, mm-hmm. which is that is that's the Sean McVay way, like that. Todd Gurley was an incredibly talented player, not taking that away from him, but Sean McVay, the way that he ran the offense, he got incredible looks for his running backs, and he's doing the exact same thing. From uh, Next Gen Stats, uh, he's the only running back since 2016 to have 70 carries and not faced a stacked box one time. And uh, Dude, that's that's pro. That, that is- means he has a 2.4 yards before contact per carry. So that's uh that's wild. That's that would be why I'm. It's like just yeah, just put Kyron in. Brees Hall's trying to Should get to two point right. four yards per carry, <laughs> let Not alone before, before contact. contact. It's usually negative two point four yards before contact. Where do Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua stack up mm. in your rankings this week? Because you know every week I'm having to go in and 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 do the dance, move Cooper Cup around, try to decide who I would start him over. It is very difficult because you don't want to miss out on. Like, Jason, you've taken an approach with Devon Achan where it's like, I don't want to be caught with my pants down. Right. You don't want Achan on your bench when he scores 50. Yeah. Like, Cooper Cup feels that way. It, but what about does. this matchup? I've, I've got Puka and Cooper next to each other in my rankings um, at wide receiver 23 and 24. So that those are ranges where you can you can bench them. You can have better options. You know, if you – if you had uh, a Tank Dell go off this year and you had Christian Kirk and those type of players where it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to start what I what I think is safer over the unknown of the Rams against what has been a very good Cleveland Brown defense, even if they are a little banged up. Uh, but they're certainly not must-bench guys. Uh, so to me, they're, uh, he's, the, he's the one that I kept going back and forth on both sides. I would uh, – right now I've got, I've got those – Two players right ahead of Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton is uh, behind them both. Okay, Hopkins against um, the Colts, and Hopkins is right in front of them both. Yeah, That's right. how my okay. rankings go. So, chasing Tyler Higby's two touchdowns against the number two nah. ranked tight end defense. Nah, man, not gonna do it. San Francisco 49ers are eight and three. They take on the ten and one Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, this is a the game of the week. It's a big one. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus three. The over-under is 48. Man. Both of you guys shook your head when you found out the line here. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Like, to me. How is this possible to be home underdogs by three points? When you're the best record in the NFL at 10-1 and one, and you're at home and you are the dog. Oh, we have we do have some uh, information here. Per ESPN Bet, Eagles are the first ten and one team to be a home underdog of a field goal or more in uh, pretty much ever. Yeah, Super Bowl era. That's when I, when I saw the line, it was like, wait, wait. Not only are they like, I feel like it should be Eagles minus two and a half. Yeah, I know that the uh, Eagles uh, is Fletcher Cox out this week, Kyle. Do we know that definitively? We don't know that definitively yet. Okay, because maybe the injuries are factoring in here. Obviously, the Eagles have been like, it's been a roller coaster. It always ends with them on top. 
But the I'm, first half of games have been like the last two weeks. The first half of games for the Eagles, Jason has conceded his fantasy matchups at that point in in yeah in the game because I've got Jalen Hurts. I plan to do it again this week against the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. Just so part of the ritual. Looking yeah. for yeah. a solid second half from Jalen Hurts, but I mean the the what the line says here is that despite the three games skid when they did not have Debo Samuel and the 49ers kind of had their little lull, that the belief is that the 49ers are the best NFC team. They have been destroying most people. They've scored over 30 points, I think, in every single game that they've had Debo for. Um, they're they're a tough defense and a great offense. So this will be – Start be all a, your normal 49ers. Mm -hmm. Purdy, McCaffrey, Debo, IU, and Kittle. Yep. And I, I still think you have I'm to start, start my Eagles all too. your Eagles. I know that the, you know, you, you adjust for schedule. The 49ers, they're, they're number one against quarterbacks, which, you know, is, is a, a very difficult matchup. But you can't bench Jalen Hurts. No. Do you realize Jalen Hurts is doing the exact opposite of what he did last year? Yes. Yes. I, I almost brought it up, but I was like, <laughs> nobody cares. Uh, but but I yes, care. because last year he would go bonkers in the first half. And then never score a point in the second half. Because they would shut it down. It's because they had a defense. So next year, maybe we get both halves. No, we'll alternate. Oh, okay. He'll be first half next year? No, no. It'll be first and third quarter. Okay, good. Two concessions per game from yeah. Jason. <laughs> um, Dallas Goddard probably not playing. And uh, A.J. Brown was limited with a thigh injury. He should be playing. DeAndre Swift should be playing. And so, yeah, it's an exciting one. Maybe, Hopefully we can get something like we got last night. You know, a battle where you get a lot of fantasy points. Sunday night football. Kansas City eight and three. Green Bay five and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Kansas City minus six. The over under is forty two and a half. And um can you hit that play a game drop? What? Do we, ha do we have that? Ooh, fun. Let's play a game. Maybe we can he play is a game. Frantically searching. We've got the <laughs> Well, we have this uh, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes, Green Bay Packer, Jordan Love situation going on, and I just thought we could play a little Yeah, what's the game? Little game with Patrick Mahomes and Jordan Love. Oh, oh yes. all right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. here for this. Passing touchdowns. Passing touchdowns on the year. Like who has more? Yeah, who's got Come more? Come on. Oh, man. It's going to be it's, Love. I'm going, I'm going Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to play the game. I'm going Love. It's Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, that's what you get. Yeah. However, 21 to 19. Okay. okay. Close. Yards per attempt. Oh, Jordan Love. It's actually Mahomes. But it's, Mahomes, you didn't let me It's 7.1. You got, you got buzzed out. 7.1 to 7. So it's basically the same. So okay. passing touchdowns, very close. Yards per attempt, very close. 20 plus air yard completions. I feel like this game's a trap. Well, I, I, Mahomes. Mahomes has not been throwing it far th this year and last year, so I'd definitely go Love. Jordan Love by a lot. 20 yeah, completions okay. over 20 yards. Mahomes has 12. And uh, the most important one, 20-plus point fantasy weeks. So games with 20-plus fantasy points at the quarterback position. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm, I don't Pat love this, but I'm going Love. I'll go Patrick Mahomes. It's Jordan Love. Oh, oh man. Gosh. Five. I was trying to play the game the other way. <laughs> five to four. Yeah, there was no game to play if Mahomes won all those. But uh, well, that would have been the game. <laughs> uh, Jordan Love. <laughs> yeah. Five 20 plus point fantasy weeks. Four for Patrick Mahomes. Oh, my. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. Wow. Just putting it in. So, the what world. you're saying is uh, you got to start. Uh, look, uh, it's just weird. It's just weird. It's not been a big fantasy year for Patrick Mahomes. Not the first time we've had that. I think about two years ago we had kind of a down year for Patrick Mahomes. Fantasy-wise, they've got a very good defense. And, you know, he's only got two games of 25-plus fantasy points. So, like, from a winning your matchup perspective, Mahomes has not been that guy. Yeah, and, and you know, even though we love McCall Hardman and Kadarius Toney being out for – the consolidation towards Rushy Rice, it's still a negative for Patrick Mahomes to not have certain weapons that they use in cer certain packages that they're used to. Um, the Green Bay Packers have been playing much, much better. This is at home. Yep. Although this, yep. is, this is the first trip for Patrick Mahomes to Lambeau. 
never played there yet. That's so. seems hard to believe. It did seem hard to believe. Uh, this is also the lowest over unders for Kansas City games that we have seen since Patrick Mahomes won his first MVP in 2018. Uh, 42 and a half point over under is very low. The games in Lambeau, I I think you temper some expectations. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is winning you this week. I don't think I don't think Pacheco's winning you this week. I I think you know you hope for some nice contribute contributing numbers from Kelsey, Pacheco, and Mahomes. Rashi Rice is kind of a wide receiver three dart throw. Mm-hmm. You're hung. I, he's my hungry for more. I am hungry for more. I am not counting on that meal in Lambeau. Yeah. I, that's a great way to to put it. It what he did. They should put Rice on the field more, but I don't know that they will. Aaron Jones didn't practice on Thursday. A.J. Dillon was limited. Jaden Reed didn't practice due to the chest injury. I believe the this was the same last week, though. He didn't he didn't yeah. participate in a lot of practices. Played and played well. And then you've got Christian Watson. He he balled out on Thanksgiving. Had his breakout, eighty eight percent of snaps, seven targets, five for ninety four, and a touchdown. So he looks like the one. And right now, this year, you do not want to play the wide receiver one against the Chiefs. Uh, that 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 opposing player has been shut down more often than not. Because of Snead? Yeah. I'm still playing Watson. Christian Watson? Yes. Really? Yeah, he's in the lineup. Wow. Yeah, I, w- I would play him. Because he, he is not um, dependent on high volume. He, he's a big play kind of guy, and I, I don't know where he's going to line up compared to uh, Dobbs and, and how that lays out. So because there's injuries and because there's some consolidation, Nora and Jones in the passing game, I'm comfortable with Watson myself. Well, I would Jason's play, not. I would play Jaden Reed over Christian Watson. Jaden Reed's been so consistent, really good, higher targets, and I don't think he's going to see Snead as much. Okay. That's fair. Mike? I Watson I, or Reed? I would play Watson. Monday night football. Cincinnati five and six. Jacksonville eight and three. Jacksonville eight and a yeah. half point home favorites. The over under is thirty eight, which gives Cincinnati a Giants like fifteen points. I will take the cover. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to paint the picture of Cincinnati's offense having success, which means. Players you've gotten accustomed to starting and in, enjoying, like Joe Mixon and Jamar Chase and even T. Higgins, when he's been active, are suddenly thrown into this world of, I have, they, they're the, I have to start them, but I'm not expecting much. I think the only player on the Bengals side to me that remains a must start is Jamar. Everybody else, I'm willing to bench. I would agree completely with that, and I would also say I am willing to bench. Jamar Chase, if you have other good options. Wow. I know, I know this last week. Hot takes. He had 81 yards, yeah. and that's great. That's that's good enough. I mean, he only scored 10 fantasy points. Like, he, he finished at 10.1 half PPR fantasy points. Two of his receptions were accidents, in, in like tipped passes that just yeah, they went. Were, they, were they were technically were. targets to him. Okay, that's that's fair, but I'm just saying, like. They were targets that fluky. Took a vacation before they got there. <laughs> right, yes. Um, so I'm just, I'm, that would take more. I mean, the, the options on a bye week when you have six, six teams on bye, it would take a lot of courage to sit down Jamar Chase. And Jason is saying, Jason is going out and saying, do it. I'm not He's saying sitting. you must bench Jamar <laughs> Chase. I'm saying Amari if Cooper. I had Calvin Ridley on the other side of the field. Oh, of course. But, uh, Amari, at, if I had Adam Thielen, I would. Oh my. Oh, would, maybe. Now that that's spicy. is a sound bite I want. To record and uh, remember. Tank Dell, I would start over. These, these, Amari Cooper? No, no, I wouldn't go that far. Amari DeAndre Cooper Hopkins? has his own backup quarterback DeAndre problems. Hopkins? Uh, no. Josh I mean, Downs? Josh no, Downs is very interesting. Yeah. I, I, I Michael think Pittman? at that point, no. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. Dude. The Pittman <laughs> Downs thing is Can we bad. take him out of the built this city? <laughs> For the rest of the year as, as punishment? No, I love no, you're not. Oh, you're not in the city. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. I thought all are welcome. Oh, all are welcome until you walk out. You turn your back on Michael Pittman. And he did once. You let him back in. Yeah, he repented. <laughs> okay. He had he had his time. He I, Mike is the one with the actual 
the the key to the city. I, so he lets people yeah. in and out as he pleases. And he had to forage I and repent, fight for his I, own. I, I apologized immediately after that I got it wrong. I'm still not over it. And right. and I see that. <laughs> to be fair, in the preseason hype, you also took dumps on Josh Downs regularly. Yeah. Well, I like so, I like <laughs> see I like Michael Pittman more. Um, I would play Michael sorry, Pittman over Jamar Chase. Detour. I would not play Downs over Jamar Chase. Travis Etienne was limited. We're playing Travis Etienne if he's active. Calvin Ridley, yep. we're playing if he's active. Christian yep. Kirk, we're playing if he's active. Yes. Which he will be. Um, Evan Ingram, your yep. start of the week, Jason, because while he's allergic to touchdowns, this he is, is playing a team that is uh, – they really enjoy giving it up to the tight end. Yeah, they are very, very bad against uh, tight end. We've targeted them all year. That defense stinks. And Evan Ingram is averaging a ton of targets. He's – been solid this year and if you wanted to take a bet on a touchdown this would be the this would be the place to get right i don't think he ends the season without a touchdown I'll, also yeah i agree but reminder if you have etn get dearness johnson on your bench where are you with trevor lawrence right now with the two good performances in a row at home heavy favorites you comfortable this week i'm yeah, this I'm week i am okay with it but i'm not really excited in the sense that i feel like this kind of a line is if it so happens that the first or second touchdowns come on the ground, then the third and fourth touchdowns come on the ground and the, the game goes slowly and they don't need to pass a ton on the Bengals. So I don't expect huge things, but obviously with a lot of bye weeks, like I'm not going to start Baker over them or something. Got an update for you. Michael Wilson officially ruled out against oh. the Steelers. It's Dorch time again. It should be uh, – yeah, one quick note on the last game. Dearness Johnson, you should add him if you have ETN. Yep. Don't forget to do that. The Dorch did get nine targets last week. Uh, and the week before was very involved so as well. So there, there is um, some viability in that start this week. Let's get into the face-off. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was this is back to back, unfortunately. I'm now it's tied with you back. guys on third place finishes. I have four firsts, four seconds, four th thirds. Impressive. Jason is six, two, and four, and Mike is two, six, and four. Yeah. And uh here we go. We're we're heading into the, the small slate got me. It was close, yeah, it right? Was hard. Uh I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, don't, I know I I know it lost. I was so far in first I stopped paying attention. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's spin it. Wheel of Shame. All right, spin the stupid wheel. Yeah. Uh, the resignation. See. I've been there. And Cowboy, safety first, rainy day. Oh, Nana. Oh, it's Nana. Oh, old oh, Nana. Old Nana. She coming for a visit? <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's oh, see. Uh, old what, Nana? What is... This looks nice and easy. Old Nana. She's oh, disgusting. <laughs> old what? Nana's what? smoking old a, Nana's cigarette? Got a cigarette. Old Nana's got a cigarette. Yeah. I mean, Nana, she should have is... died long ago. She's not worried about wow. how long that's going to take. Old Nana. Oh. Wow. This is, this is. Uh... <laughs> Where, how does this work? I don't know what you're supposed to do with the top. I think you put it over on the sides. No, no, no. It goes over the. It goes. No, it, you pull it, it, it over. It covers my hair. Yeah. 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 Old Nana's pretty. Pretty gross. Oh, wait. There's the Velcro. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Let's go. <laughs> Perfect. All Nana. right. We are into this week's fantasy face-off. Uh, kind of look like a pirate. <laughs> uh, she's hideous. <laughs> I don't know if the eye holes are going to line up. No. I just need one. All right. We're good. <laughs> don't don't smoke, kids. Uh, all right. Can we start at tight end? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Let's start at the tight end position where I've, Jason has Brevin Jordan. I've got Brevin Jordan. He's... Yeah. 2,500 well, that's, that's cheap wild. as it can get. Welcome to the party, pal. Brevin Jordan's been in my lineup the whole day. Oh, for real? Yeah, 2,500. Wow. What right. are we doing? All right. We're living on the edge, baby. I have paid more. Najoku? David Najoku. That's who I had in there. At 4,100. Let's jump to quarterbacks, Jason. Um, I'm going with my start of the week against Philadelphia. Favored Brock Purdy. How much? He is 6,100. Yeah. Who do you got, Mike? I have Tua. 
7,900. 7,900 against the Washington Manders. It's really difficult to see in this mask, guys. <laughs> um, I see that you knew it was 7,900 because I'm guessing you have Tua. Yes, I do. Okay. I have yeah. Tua Tungavailoa against Washington. 7,900. I had Brock Purdy, and then I found this guy, Brevin Jordan, who unlocked a lot of stuff. All right, so Jason, you're starting two running backs this week. Well, my start of the week, a guy that I have been a truther of as long as I've <laughs> known his name. Uh, Zach Moss is only 4,600. I assume he's going to be in all three of our lineups because it's a broken price. Is that is that a fair assertion? It, it, he's not in my running back one or two spot. Though. He's in your flex. Yeah, we've all got uh, <laughs> Zach Moss. And I've got Alvin Kamara oh. at 8,200, hoping to get about 500 targets. I have Zach Moss and Alvin Kamara. I have... Najee Harris at 5,200, my start of the week at home against the Arizona Cardinals. And Christian McCaffrey at 9,000. He didn't like losing to McCaffrey last week. No, I did not. That is uh, – it's a tough matchup against Philly, but uh, it's yeah, Christian McCaffrey. Have, you ever seen Christian McCaffrey play? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm not worried about it. Uh, Jason, you're starting three wide receivers. Uh, this is where I paid up. I've got Tyreek Hill, which I assume you have because you've got Tua. Uh, but I've also got Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, so I, I spent a lot on those two wide receivers, and then a player Andy has been bullish on this week. Curtis Samuel is only 4,100. All right. Uh, I have Tyree Kill at 9,600. I have Curtis Samuel at 4,100, and I have Josh Downs at 5,100, my start of the week. I have Tyree Kill to go with the stack with Tua. I have the other Mander. I have Terry McLaurin at 5,500, hoping 55. for some – Sweet correlation there. And then I had to start saving some cash, so I have Devontae Parker. That's not New bad. New England Patriot against the Chargers at home. How much 30, is 3300 Yeah, that's, oh, that's a good start. That's a good price. That's a good start. And we already we already did our tight ends, which means we know Mike's flex yes, Zach is Moss. Zach Moss. So what's your defense, Mike? The New England Patriots at home at 2400 Okay, and then Jason, my your flex? My defense is the New England Patriots, same as his, and my flex is the Dorch, Greg Dorch, Ooh. at only 3,700. Which was Ooh, okay. a mid-show pivot. No. No? Greg Dorch has been in my what lineup was, all what, week. What What did Brevin Jordan let you change? I Amon basically sw I switched to Amon Ra from Brandon Ayuk. I had the Brandon Ayuk stack with yeah. the Joku, yeah. and then I, I just wanted to have fun. <clears throat> well, I spent uh, I spent up on uh, you know Kamara and Tua and Tyreek. I also have the Falcons defense, which is 3,400, nice. taking on the Jets and Tim Boyle. So my bargain, wide receiver, which uh, you have Devontae Parker at 3,300. Jason, you had uh, Dorch, Dorch at, at how 30, much? 3,700. I have a 3,000 burger from Kyle Phillips this week against Indianapolis. Oh, enjoy your two receptions. Oh, I will enjoy the heck out of that at 3,000. And we'll see if Mike ends up in another disgusting mask for a third week in a row. Nah. <laughs> that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $150 in bonus bets instantly. When you place a $5 bet on any football game, that's the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The way that they designed this mask, it's like... It's they, not for giant heads, I'll tell you that. Well, they want it, they want it to go into your eyes. <laughs> right, like to actually impale? Yeah. I don't, I don't understand why they want it to hurt, but <laughs> it does. So, <laughs> Well, that'll do it for today's show. Don't forget, BallersLive.com, Sunday morning. Come tilt with us. Get ready for the weekend. See if you can recover from DK. Catch you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Yes, Join our fantasy football man, uh, community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.